Hey you, American woman who degrading Filipino woman who cannot speak English and being poor. So what? At least we have morals. What about you? You are the reason why American men, they go out overseas and looking for a wife. Because you are the reason. Here's why. Here's the reason why. Because American women are very feminist. They're feeling entitled. They don't respect their husband. They're argumentative. And what else? They don't clean the house. They don't make themselves look beautiful. They don't have a job. Oh, by the way, most Americans said that American women are very juvenile. And also they said, once you have the kids, once you have a kid, you flip your cookie. All right, now I just crossed 86,000 subscribers. And it wasn't very long ago, I think maybe about a week and a half ago, I was at 85,000 subscribers. So you know what that tells us? That tells us that this Passport Bros content is expanding and growing in ways that most of us never imagined it was going to. So, um... I already know that for the short term, you know, there's a lot of this content that needs to still be um, done. And uh, I just wanted to add one more video. And this one is really not a uh, stitch reply. This one's a little bit different. Here we have an Indian Times um, article and normally you wouldn't be able to read it except for the fact that, thank God, we have the technology of iPhone. So basically for this one, all I got to do is highlight what I want to read and then just push translate. And it says, here is the story. It says, meaning of passport bros, the term to find a match that went viral on TikTok. So understand what's happening here. These foreign women are hearing more and more and more about Passport Bros, specifically because of TikTok. Now, I'm still waiting for Lindsey Graham to hurry up and do something to ban TikTok. But the thing about it is the government seems to drag their heels on everything. Okay, so the translation here. The term Passport Bros. Okay, so obviously it's Passport Bros, but because this is, uh, you know, a loose translation, they don't understand that bros is specifically talking about black American men who get their passports to travel abroad to find love and foreign marriage with foreign women. That's what the definition is. Now, before I continue, just in case you're new here, uh, let me break down these definitions for you. A passport bro is a black man, period. I don't care what you hear anywhere else. And I have to be very, very solid with these definitions because the problem is you every now and then you might have somebody try to hijack your words and shit. That's not happening here. A passport bro is a black American man who gets his passport to go abroad for foreign relationships. No matter how you want to phrase it, usually that's going to end in marriage, typically. Now, a plantation bro is a man who stays here in America and decides to deal with what you got here. A passport Joe is a white man who does the exact same thing as the passport bro. A passport Joe goes abroad looking for relationships. So yeah, Passport Joes have been doing this for a long time. They usually go to like Southeast Asia. Many of them go to South America, which is exactly what the Passport Bros are doing right now. So you got the Passport Bros, you got the Passport Joes. Now, women who get their passport and they go abroad, those are the Passport Hoes. Now, they're usually not as successful as the Passport Bros and the Passport Joes. Most of them are Stellas getting their groove back, and a lot of them complain on TikTok when they get taken advantage of, and the guy gets comes back here, she gets him a green card, next thing you know, he starts cheating on her with all her friends, and he goes to So yeah, they're, they're not really as um, successful as the Passport Bros and the Passport Joes. 
So those are the Passport Bros, the Passport Joes, the Passport Hoes. Then you also have the uh, Plantation Bros. Now, a lot of these angry women on TikTok have tried to insult the Passport Bros. And they'll use any methodology that they can to insult the Passport Bros. For example, there's a man right now in China who's facing execution because he killed a Chinese uh, student. Now, first of all, that was a Muslim man. And he killed this Chinese student. He does not count as a passport bro. So, you know, they, they've tried to link him to the passport bros, which is the reason why it's important for us to solidify the definition. And that's the reason why I won't allow these definitions to be hijacked. And I have to start out with a definition session. So um, those are the, the, the trifecta of passport traveling Americans. The passport bros, passport joes, passport hoes. Now, they have tried to say that we're just interested in sex tourism and trafficking and this, that, and other. Those are the transport bros because they transport hoes. So those are the transport bros, the transport hoes. We, are ha we have nothing to do with that. We have absolutely nothing to do with that. OK, so we will not be linked with the transport bros because that's a total different faction out there. Another uh, insult that they've thrown at the passport bros is that passport bros will go over to a foreign country and get single moms in that foreign country. And uh, we're we're accepting leftover women. That's the Chinese term, shung nu, leftover women. The Japanese call them Christmas cake. Um, those are cleanup bros. Those are men who are left behind to clean up the mess made by another man. Those are basically men who get to the party late. And now they've got to help clean up. Uh, uh passport bros have nothing to do with the cleanup bros. We have nothing to do with the cleanup bros and we have nothing to do with the transport bros. So now that I've settled these definitions, these see this Indian, the reason I have to do this. This Indian paper right here, this article, they don't understand the terms, which you can understand. I mean, those people don't speak English, for one. This article's not in English, for two. They don't understand these terms. So just in case that one of them happens to be listening to this, I'm explaining the terms in simplistic terms that they can understand. Okay, so it says the term passport bros ten trend is going viral on, and notice that it's on TikTok. You see, if you're in India, you have access to TikTok. China has basically flooded the entire world with TikTok. You can be in the Philippines, Thailand, or India, and you can easily get TikTok. You cannot easily get Facebook. Facebook will, in many cases, uh, delete your account um, because of security issues. Um, in many cases, if you're in one of those countries, you may have to use a VPN just to be able to access Facebook because they disallow Facebook in most of those countries. They also disallow portions of YouTube and they also disallow portions of most other American social medias. So if you're say if you're in Thailand, India, Cambodia, Vietnam, you may not be able to get Facebook, you may not be able to get parts of YouTube. You may have a lot of censorship that you have to fight through. You may not be able to see certain channels. But TikTok was spread by the Chinese. And this is one of the reasons why I think they need to hurry up and ban it, just like they're shooting down these spy balloons. Because they're basically saying that TikTok is a Chinese espionage tactic. Okay? So, it says this is considered to bring down women's self-esteem and underappreciate it. Then, what does passport bros mean, and how does this quite controversial term come from? See in the following explanation. All right, so they're trying to explain it, and from what they've heard, they've heard that passport bros are insulting to women, and they bring down women's self-esteem. But we've already heard all of the sh sign language, the shame, the insult, the guilt, and the need to be right. Thank God for Kevin Samuels, because now we all understand what we're facing when we hear this, this, this nonsense. Okay? Okay, so it says, this passport is not an official document used abroad. Passport bros 
a term that is going viral on the TikTok app has meaning when American men travel to Asia in search of women who can be their partners. They think that this is just men traveling to Asia because these are Indian people. This is not just men traveling to Asia. Passport bros are black men traveling worldwide, globally. We're not just, tra but see, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm, do I'm correcting them because I understand that they don't understand it, so I'm correcting them, okay? It says, why is this happening? The reason American men think that women are America only see wealth, okay, they think that women in America only see wealth, are quite arrogant and also lack respect for them. They consider that Asian women are more obedient, patient, and accept their partners as they are. All right? So this is, again, this is an Asian woman's perspective right there. Now, you can't read any of that unless you read that Hindu or that Bengali or whatever. I'm not even sure which language this is, but the bottom line is uh, Apple's got you covered. All right. Let's go to the next part. Highlight all this. Highlight, highlight. Okay. All right. This trends, or I guess they mean trend, passport bro, begins when American men vacation to Asia to find a partner who fits their criteria. On this trend, American men want Asian women who are more nurturing, patient, and respectful of them as a couple. On the other hand, Asian women are sometimes quite happy if they get a partner from a board who they consider Caucasians. Many people have pride in this. Okay, they are not thinking about the fact that there's black men traveling abroad. They are used to seeing white men doing this. Those are the passport Joes. We are the passport bros. All right. However, this also raises quite complicated pros and cons for American women, Asians, and men who are passport bros. Brooches. <laughs> passport bros. There you go. Okay. Okay. How young? All this words and stuff. Okay. This quite unique and shocking thing about this Passport Bros raises many pros and cons in cyberspace. Women have many opinions that men in America are unable to meet the standards of women in their country. There are also those who argue that this trend is quite exploiting and demeaning Asian women who protect their partners more. Many people think that the man doesn't really love him sincerely. That the man doesn't love him sincerely. I think this is uh, one of those gender verb disagreements, I believe. Sometimes him and her, because of the feminine and masculine, when it comes to these nouns and pronouns, sometimes it gets confused. On the other hand, many people think that this trend is legitimate if both parties are suitable and agree to have a relationship, let alone to a more serious level. Well, first of all, as long as these people are of legal age to marry, and as long as these people are legally able to marry, as in they haven't been married before, uh, it's really nobody's business uh, what they choose to do. But you have to remember that in these Asian cultures, family is everything. Family name is everything. A lot of these marriages are still arranged. A lot of these marriages must be cleared by the grandparents before these people are allowed to get married. Otherwise, a person who decides to marry against the family's wishes could get cut off from the family uh, inheritance. Like, for instance, I know a uh, Bengali man who, when he married his wife, he literal now by the way this was a bengali man and he had to pay his wife's family in gold they had a they had a, a bride price cuz you have to understand in a lot of these cultures they have bride prices that have to be paid and if the family accepts it then the man is allowed to marry the the wife um, but he told me he had to pay his family in gold in order to get married. 
Um, so, you know, it, it is what it is. On the other hand, many people think that this trend is legitimate if both parties are suitable and agreed to have a relationship, let alone to a more serious level. What do you think? Are you a team of pros or cons to this passport bros trend? Well, you already know what I think. Yes, uh, obviously I am pro passport bro. And the reason why, and, I, and I'll just say this because I'm not going to make this very long. The reason why I'm pro passport bro is because I'm pro American male happiness. American males are not happy. A little while ago, I was looking at yet another, um, uh, how should I say, another uh, look at the recent article that was released by Pew Research that was talking about 60% of men are single. A lot of the women are not because they're shacking up with each other and these women are dating each other. And a lot of these men are uh, lonelier than ever because they're literally saying that they have uh, fewer friends than ever before. And the reason why the relationships between men and women are failing in America is obvious. I've pointed that out in probably the last video that I made. And um, my thing is, these men need to experience more. They need to experience travel abroad. And they need to experience femininity abroad. They need to experience living abroad. Because the reality is, America has declined so much that now more and more, you're hearing foreigners literally saying, they're coming to America to make money, yes, but they don't intend on staying here. A lot of these foreigners will tell you straight up front, America is much too violent, much too dangerous, and they'd rather take the money that they make here and go back to their country. Well, that's no different than what most of these passport bros intend to do. These passport bros, such as Sunshine Shoulders and even Jay from Black Filipino TV, they have uh, their YouTube channels. They moved abroad to what, the Philippines, for example, some of them moved to the Philippines, some moved to Thailand, some moved to Vietnam, some moved to Cambodia, uh, some moved to South Korea, some moved to Japan, and living there gives them all the peace and the serenity that they're not going to get here. Sunshine Shoulders was just uh, featured on O'Shea Duke Jackson's channel, where he literally explains, yeah, I moved over here to the Philippines. Now, this is an older black man who's retired. I moved over here to the Philippines, and I'm never going back to America. Espe black men especially have all the reason in the world why they can say that they don't want to live in America anymore. Um, when they did these research uh, data studies and they did all this of these young men, a lot of it, they didn't break down by race. They didn't talk about young black males versus young white males versus like young Hispanic males or males of a non-Hispanic, uh, non-white background. They didn't do those racial, they didn't do the breakdown. My belief is that most of the men that they studied talking about the loneliness, my belief is that most of them were young white males. I can't prove that because, you know, I'd have to go and dig up all their data. But I'm pretty sure that the people they did the study on were mostly young white males. Um, the bigger picture, white America has declined. In the 2020 census, they absolutely show that white America has been declining. Uh, all of the statistics that you've heard have basically insisted that white Americans are declining. The last 2020 survey census, it showed that blacks in general had only improved a small amount. And the actual article that I've pointed out to you in another video, it specifically said that Asians and Hispanics were leading the growth in America. It showed that whites had declined. It showed that blacks had only improved a small amount, but it showed that Asians and Americans Asians and Hispanic Americans were leading the uh, improvement, were leading the growth. I'll put the, uh, I'll put the URL in to the uh, URL section, and I'll put it first, so this way you can read it if you want to read it. But I've showed you this article before. They, it's funny to me, they didn't talk so much about that in the news. They didn't talk about that study. But the one that they are talking about right now is what's happening to these young boys. You see conservatism is about conserving. It's all in the word. Conservatism is about conserving. Most white Americans 
identify as conservatives, whether they're conservative, liberal, or they, and they can be both. They can be leftist, but they can still be conservative. They're trying to conserve their belief of what America is. The problem that they're having is that their kids are being destroyed by liberalism. I'll just say it just the way it is. They've even come up with this thing that they call replacement theory that says that they're being replaced by all of these illegal aliens that are being brought into America. I don't consider it replacement theory. I consider it replacement fact. I'm like Thanos. I consider it inevitable. It is replacement fact. The government is doing it to them. This whole bullshit about them bringing in busloads of people and dropping them off at Kamala Harris's house and bringing busloads of people here to New York and bringing busloads of people to Texas. Uh, excuse me, if I was the president, and this is the reason why y'all need to elect me president, I know it's not going to happen. Fox News is going to do a hit job on me and they'll run me out. But the reason I need to be president is because if you sent me busloads of people, I'm turning those buses right around and shipping them outside the border. I would treat it as priority one, not priority zero. This government is treating it as not a priority. And the next time you hear about those busloads, oh, yes, well, we're giving them the best of medication. We're giving them the best of food. I'm like, wait a minute. No, 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 wait a minute. They're here illegally. We need to ship them out now. But see, I get shit done. Your government doesn't get shit done. And the thing you have to understand is that economics, economics 101 shows that whatever government pays for, government gets. Government gets whatever it pays for. If they can send a $400 million jet to fire a $500,000 missile at a balloon, you're telling me that they can't turn a busload of people around and get them outside of the border? Think about that for a second. We've got B-2 bombers flying around. They got nothing to do because we ain't using them. These things are $2 billion a piece. You can't even see these things on radar because these things are so expensive that these things are literally invisible on radar. They can build a $2 billion airplane but they can't turn a bus around and ship it back over the border. Think about that for a second. Think about that. Government gets what it pays for. Government pays for what it gets. You're being replaced. And the reason why, again, you're being replaced is absolutely because of the article. The article said there's something wrong with your young boys. The article says your young boys aren't having sex. The article says your young boys are falling into depression, loneliness, and suicide. And no me. That's the word. And you're not going to hear that word because most of these journalists are fake journalists and they're so dumb that they don't even understand what they're talking about. And they're plagiarizing each other. I am the only person who you hear using terms like apathy, anomy, and Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's stages of grief. Nobody else has said that. I brought it up. I've been bringing it up for the last year. Nobody has been. No, I haven't heard a single other person mention that shit, except for people who I know listen to what I'm saying. So that's the bottom line. That's where you are. So as far as this passport bros phenomenon, I'm pro passport bros because I know that it's the answer that these young men need. It's funny because it was always believed that um, Americans and Westerners were likely to travel to Asia because it had answers for them that they weren't finding in the West. And it just so happens that in this case, yeah, it absolutely does have answers. Because if you're telling me that the average American has no friends, has no girlfriend, isn't going out on dates, isn't having sex, if you're telling me all these things and then you're telling me and I, I, you're not telling me this because we've seen it. We've seen, we're, we're watching these videos. We're watching these, these articles popping up. We're seeing live videos of passport bros going abroad. Almost instantaneously, they're meeting women. And they're having the best time. And they're all saying the same thing. We're having the greatest time in our life. I wish I didn't have to go back home. Yeah, eight... 
sometimes the grass is greener on the other side. And that's just what it is. So that's the story from Duniaku.com, this Indian newspaper. That's the little article. And notice how short it is. This person obviously does not know much about the content except the little bit that they saw on TikTok. And, that, and that's what it is. This is the type of journalism that we're being forced to deal with at this point. But um, I've broken it down before, and I don't mind breaking it down for duniakuinternet.com. Hell, I might even send the person who wrote this story a copy of this video after I finalize it. It takes time to finalize my videos because YouTube doesn't like the term passport bros, even though they see how much money it's making and how much attention it's getting. So what they do is they um, demonetize the videos until you force them to do manual reviews. And once they do the manual review, after that, that's when I will list the video. And usually with the manual review, they're just checking to make sure you don't have a lot of profanity in it or you don't have any hate speech or anything in it, which as far as I know, I've done my best to keep out of this video. So basically that's it. Love and marriage. Love and marriage. It's an institute you can't disparage. Ask your local Jan Tree, and he will tell you it's elementary. As for us, Filipino women, the man that you don't want, we want. Because you know why? We have to, we're going to give this man a lot of love, respect. We're going to treat him like a king. We also, you know, we work because we contribute in the household. That's what we do. And we take care of ourselves, first of all. You know, we take care of our family, the elderly, everybody we take care of. So for you to say and degrade us, it's a no-no. We're going to start clapping because good for you that all the men are not marrying you. Because they need to be happy. So for all the passport pros, go to the Philippines and find yourself a, a wife. You're not going to be sorry. You're going to be happier. So for all the passport passport pro out there. So funny is because a lot of people will be like, oh, I don't know how to cook because my mama never had showed me how to cook. Okay, your mama never showed you how to suck dick and you still know how to suck dick because you want it to be a whore. So you figure it out on yourself. So if you want to learn how to be a mom, a wife, a cook, a chef, you can learn that too. Easy. All it takes is you one to do it. But cooking is therapy to me. It's relaxing. It's a form of art. And I also like to feed people. I like when people are full. I like to watch people eat. It make me happy. <laughs> it do. It really make me happy to watch people eat and enjoy food. Because food is just so, brings so much happiness, you know. Because a lot of country, people are poor. They don't have food. They don't get to eat really good thing. And we forget that food is a pleasure. Food is a luxury. Food is life for me. Ever since I moved away from Atlanta, I try to cook less because I don't really don't have a bunch of people at my house anymore. But I don't know how to cook in small portion. I'm so used to cooking for the whole fucking neighborhood. So this Christmas, I said that I wasn't going to cook a lot. I didn't cook for Thanksgiving because we were out of town. So I decided for Christmas, I was going to cook the same stuff I cooked for Thanksgiving. But somehow, some way, I still overcook. Today, I made my teriyaki turkey. Mmm. It was so tender, falling off the bone. I did some all fry, all flat, some steak rib, mm, some double loaded mashed potato. Mm. I guess the question you need to ask the average American man, when you go overseas and you're staying in your condo and you happen to meet a chick just like this, it's like, what goes through a man's mind? When he meets a nice chick like this. Now, you know where you'd find this right here? Because a lot of guys be asking me, oh, where do you find this? Philippines, Indonesia, South Korea. And you meet a woman like this. As far, oh, by the way, Thailand. I have to say Thailand. Yes. L even Laos and Cambodia. You can meet, man, you meet a woman like this. And she is waving to you. And she's giving you the choosing signals. I guess they call it choosing signals. And she's waving to you. She's like... Honey, come this way to heaven and paradise. But in order to ensure that your night ends exactly like this, you need someone to help you meet the person of your dreams. For love, for marriage, this 
is who you should talk to. VietnamWingman.com. Give them a look. To be continued.